Hello and welcome to this walkthrough on getting started with building an embedded Linux distribution with Yocto from source. I'm John Weber and I'll be the guy taking you through this process. First, why would you want to build your own embedded Linux distribution? Well, there are a lot of reasons. Manageability, maintainability, license tracking and usage. Um, you're building from the ground up as opposed to taking an off the shelf distribution like Debian or Ubuntu and trimming it down to fit your needs. In this video, I'm really going to be taking you through the process to build the distribution for the Pico IMX8 M Mini using Yocto, but this is equally applicable to any board for which we have support in our Yocto metadata layer, such as EDM, Axon, Zor, Flex, or any of our panel and embedded computer products. Uh, one thing I wanted to note, we have an excellent readme on our GitHub that I'll be following along. If you don't want to spend the time to watch the video, please feel free to dive in yourself at the URL below or use this video and follow along with it. Sometimes it's helpful if you're doing this for the first time just to see how it is done to get a feel for the process. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the starting point for this project starts at our GitHub repository at github.com slash technection. Where you need to go here is to the TN IMX Yocto manifest, which is a manifest of a lot of different Git repositories that we use for building embedded Linux. We're gonna use the bleeding edge of where we're at today in September of 2020, and that is the Zeus 5.4 Y next branch. Zeus means Yocto 3.0, 5.4 refers to the version of the Linux kernel we are using, and the dash next branch refers to the development branch that we have posted in our GitHub. So we're gonna go there. Now the first thing you need to do, and I've already done this, so I'll show you that I've already done this, is to create this directory in your home directory called the, uh, bin. So tilde slash bin is your home directory with slash bin in it. And then you're going to fetch the repo tool and put that into a file called tilde slash bin slash repo. And then you're going to make that executable and then you're gonna add that to your path. So I'm gonna show you how I've done this already. So if I just do ls dash al tilde slash bin, I see that the repo tool is already there. And then if I want to check my path, I can do that just by running echo dollar sign path. And I see that home, that is in the, in the path at home, John, I'm John, uh, bin. So that's good. So the next thing we need to do is we will go through and create a new directory um, to store our project. So um, I always put everything in projects. And then if I'm building Yocto, I build it, I put it in a project called uh, TN Yocto. And I go to tn yocto and I put everything in there. I'm going to go ahead and just remove what I had there just to show you. I don't have anything there. I'm going to make this directory again mictor edm underscore yocto following our instructions. You can name this whatever you want, by the way. cd edm yocto. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run the repo tool uh, in this directory. And what this will do is this will go and fetch a whole lot of different Git repositories. Um, so we're gonna fast forward through a lot of that as it's going, but uh, just for time, but uh, here is the command that we're just gonna copy and paste all the way to here. So copy and paste this. Incidentally, if you want to build an OS that contains Docker, um, the ability to run Docker uh, containers, you can build one here just using this line. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this now. And then we're gonna kind of hang out here. Okay, it's already done, so we're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do all of the sync. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the repo sync. Now I only have four processors, so back here dash j4 repo sync dash j8 would be if you had eight processor cores i have four processor cores that i've given to this virtual machine so i'm going to go ahead and do that now we're going to go ahead and run this this will take a minute whoops i should be using the dash the sync there we go all right now this could take a couple minutes so we're going to sort of fast forward through all of this Okay, so now Repo has finished getting all of the different projects, all the different Git projects we're using. 
Now we need to go ahead and install a bunch of different packages. Now I've gone through this process, but it's very simple. All you need to do is, especially if you're using, a, you're using Ubuntu, is you just copy this and then paste that into your shell. Now I'm not gonna go and do that right now because I've already done it and it takes a little bit of time to download and install all that stuff, but that is what you would go ahead and do. So the next thing you need to do is prepare the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware. We're very sorry we can't give you the firmware in an open repository, but we're restricted from doing that because of licensing. Um, but if you need that, just call or just email sales at deconnection.com. So in any case, uh, we have, uh, we need to go ahead and get these files. I have them already loaded here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Just go to CD to sources, meta, TN, IMX, BSP. That's our main metadata layer. Recipe dash kernel, and then go to Linux dash firmware. I'm just kind of reading along here, really firmware, and then you go to files. Right, there's nothing in there right now, but all we need to really do is go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and tar XZVF, and I'm gonna say it's tilde, it's, I know where they are, tilde and slash documents, and then QCA firmware, this file here. I'm gonna go ahead and unpack that file into this location, and all is good there. So we're set there. So we're gonna go back to where we were, Okay, in EDM Yocto. And now we need to go through the process of configuring the build. So to do that, we have to identify a few things. We have to identify the machine we want to build for, which is uh, the, the, the module or the single board computer or the panel or the embedded box computer that we're talking about. We need to identify the distro which is sort of a new way, as it says here, to configure the graphic backends. So in this case, we're talking about FSL IMX X Wayland because we'll be using Wayland graphics uh, and then we may want to run some X11 applications on that, even though the X11 applications are not going to be supported if they use uh, EGL. Um, if you're running IMX6 or IMX7, you have the option of using uh, X11, although that is not available for any of the 64-bit um, architectures from NXP. Um, and then likewise, the same thing with IMX FB or frame buffer. So we're using FSL IMX X Wayland. Um, so we'll set that up. And then you can also identify the baseboard that you're wanting to use. In this case, we're gonna be using the Pi baseboard, the Pico Pi. Um, and then you can identify uh, if you have a module for which we built Broadcom uh, versions of it. So say IMXX, IMX7 modules um, for which we had Broadcom based uh, wireless. You could identify the particular wireless module you're using. Um, and then also uh, you can set a flag here called Wi-Fi underscore firmware to say that the Wi-Fi firmware should be loaded um, into, the, uh, into the distribution when it's done. Um, so uh, we provide you with a couple of shortcuts here um, that you may want to go through and use. So here it's actually pretty much all set up for you. Um, you can just copy this line for Pico IMX 8M Mini. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, right? And I'm gonna paste this right here. And about the only thing that I'm gonna change on this that I, I prefer is I prefer to build um, and the, the directory I want uh, I may build for um, other processor platforms or other application, other um, machines right there. So I don't like to kind of tag the machine name on the end of the, uh, or the SOC name on the end of it. So I just kind of take that off. Um, this really could be whatever you want. Um, so anyway, this is the way we nor I normally do it. So go ahead and create this. Now, the first thing you're gonna have to do is you have to go through and accept a bunch of um, licenses and I kind of do like the way a lot of people do. If you want to, you can certainly read through the whole thing. Um, but then I say yes and everything is done. So so there is um, there is our, our build directory here. Uh, this is the very important directory. You kind of stay in that when you're running BitBake, um, which is the main build tool. Now we are ready to go through and build. So for building, uh, what you wanna be able to do is identify the kind of image you wanna build. Um, and that is, uh, there's a list of these images, just example images that you can be building. We're gonna go ahead and build core image minimal. 
Um, Core Image Minimal is a very minimal, small console only image that's really good for um, essentially a first build uh, because you're not building a lot of other attendant applications. Uh, it takes uh, the least amount of time to actually build, but you're still building all of the packages and software that are specific to your system. So it's great to be able to uh, determine whether the, the build will boot onto your, onto your board. And that's where I recommend starting. And then once you've gone through that, you can build some of these larger images. For example, IMX Image Full, which contains a, a bunch of stuff like QT5 uh, with machine learning. Um, and you know, one of the things to also note is that some of these are not applicable to all of the software platforms. So for example, IMX Image Full is not supported on Ultralight, Ultra Light Light, all the ULL, the Solo Light, and the 7 Dual. Um, likewise, Core Image Sato isn't going to be supported on any of the 64-bit platforms because those don't support X11. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to build Core Image Minimal. And by doing that, all we have to do is run BitBake. So BitBake Core dash Image dash Minimal. And we're going to go ahead and start this here. I'm going to go ahead and point out a couple of things. You're going to see a few of these uh, warnings in the very beginning. Um, some of them you don't really have to worry about. Actually, all of them you don't have to worry about. Um, in this case, there's there's some setting in the NXP NFC layer um, that needs to be set in later versions of Yocto that isn't set, so it kind of complains a little bit. Um, then also, we're building on Ubuntu 20.04. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not a, a tested distribution for this particular version of Yocto, although it seems to work just fine. Um, the first step here that'll happen is it'll parse through all the recipes and then it'll go ahead and execute the build. Um, we're going to go ahead and fast forward through a lot of this because uh, it, it can take quite a while, especially the first time when you are downloading all the sources and you're building everything from scratch about the only thing that you're not building is some of the host packages that you'll have installed in the very beginning up here. Um, some of these you're not actually building, of course, but, but almost everything else, including the cross tool chain is built from source. So uh, that will be done during this process. Um, it's going through and parsing all the recipes here. And then when it's done with that, it'll go through and do the build. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of fast forward. Okay, so now we have gone through the parsing step and it's going through and doing a lot of setup right now. Um, you'll notice that uh, it's doing a lot of set scene steps, which is really just kind of setting up all of the different uh, packages to be built. Um, just wanted to also note, just to kind of make this a little bit faster for me personally, I did go through this process uh, earlier today uh, before recording this uh, tutorial and so because I mentioned that earlier step about the set scene, or not about the set scene, but the shared state, um, almost all of the resultant uh, packages are already built on my machine and they're stored. Um, so um, it will likely just pull everything out of shared state and build me an image. And it may take, you know, five, 10 minutes to go through that process. Um, but in any case, this is just to let you know that um, this will actually be pretty quick. Um, for me, but uh, we're still going to fast forward through almost all of this. And there we go. So we're done. So when we're done with this, I uh, just want to show you where things are built. So uh, just to give you an idea, the directory structure here is you have a cache directory, um, you'll have a conf directory, and you have this TMP or temp directory. That is really where everything is built. So if I go to CD to temp, that's where pretty much everything is being done. Uh, the next directory you're gonna look for is work. Actually, no, uh, you're going into the deploy directory, right? And that is where CD to deploy, if I did this right. So we have deploy and then here we have a couple of different, or a few different directories. We have deb, which contains uh, the Debian packages that are generated from all of the different of the different uh, packages that we build, and then the images directory and licenses directory. So we're gonna where our product is located is in the images directory. 
And then there is a underneath there, it's under Pico IMX 8M Mini or the machine name. And then we have a bunch of files underneath there. Now the file that we are most interested in grabbing is a file named, uh, it is the root file system, but it's actually an SD card uh, image, which is a monolithic image that's meant to be written straight to an SD card. And that is this right here, core image minimal, and then it's concatenated with the machine name, and it's .sdcard.bz2. Okay, so that just about wraps up this video. It is a bit of a lengthy process, but I think it helps to walk through some of the steps with you to give you an idea of how it is done and what the process looks like. The next step is to take the image that we built and write that into the EMMC of a board and boot it, but that is a subject for another video. And before I go, I just wanted to share some additional points. Um, building an entire operating system from source is a pretty resource heavy task involving really significant amounts of storage, RAM, and CPU. Um, when I was first learning about this, I asked some of the experts at the Yocto project for advice regarding how much you know, resource to give uh, to a build. And what I was told is, give it as much as you possibly can um, because you'll be better off. Um, you might be able to get away with a little bit of RAM, CPU and storage, but you know, here are my minimums. And these are only for building a platform for development purposes. I, I wouldn't personally live with less than eight gigabytes of RAM, four CPUs, and at least 150 gigabytes of storage space for code and the generated files. Um, I give my VMs at least that amount of space to work with. If you're building a machine to perform CI, CD, or nightly builds and so forth, you need much more than that. And for that, I would actually recommend looking into a cloud service which can put enormous amounts of CPU resource at your disposal instantly. But when starting out, and or if you just need to build a machine every once in a while for hands-on testing or you know, as, as an example, this works great and I use it all the time in my support and development work. Okay, so that's it for now. Stay tuned and subscribe for additional tutorials and technical information with TechNection. I'm John Weber. See you next time.